In a previous video, I posted a few years ago, I showed how we could control a thermos via Wi-Fi so that it only heated water during reduced rate hours or during solar production hours and so that it made the most of solar surpluses. Even on cloudy days, I installed this power regulator for him. With this inexpensive system, I have always been heating the water making the most of the solar production. The only drawback to this system is that if you are at home consuming more energy than the panels are producing, the thermos will still continue heating water and there will be moments in which solar surpluses will not be taken advantage of for this purpose. That is why in this video I am going to show you how by installing this Shelly energy meter we can make our thermos work as long as there is solar production without worrying about the schedules and that it is disconnected at times when we consume more energy than in which is being produced in our panels. This system can also serve us, even if we do not have solar panels, to stop our thermos. En los momentos en que estamos en el límite de la potencia contradada, comenzamos Soy Miguel, bienvenidos a mi canal. This is the Shelly EM, which as you can see is a very small device which is capable of measuring the energy of two independent lines using its perimetric clamps to do so. This can be purchased together with the meter or separately. The meter has an auxiliary contact with which we can activate and deactivate load, always interposing a re-read or a contactor. If our thermos has an independent line in the automatic panel, we could activate and deactivate it directly with the Shelly. But as in 95% of cases, the thermos shares a line with the washing machine or other elements. And for this, we have the possibility of using Shelly's smart plug, which we can activate and deactivate from the same application with which we are going to create a couple of scenes so that it controls the turning on of the thermos. Going from production and consumption of the home, as always, the description of the video you can find the purchase links. Obviously we have to do the connection inside the electrical box. The module is powered directly at 230 volts at the lean terminals. The zero terminal is the auxiliary contact that in some cases could be used to activate the thermos, but in mine I am going to use it to activate a relay to open the door of the property from the same application. Taking advantage of this contact, you will find on this channel one pair of videos related to opening doors from your mobile phone. I leave you up here on the link card. But for any other case, we will only need to power from Lie N. We will always choose to connect to the lighting line corresponding to the 10 amp thermal. At least. To power this module and maneuver, the thermostat is activated directly through a contactor. Obviously, the thermos must receive power from its own line. The four terminals that are available in the module are for connecting the current traces, also called amperometric part. Make sure you connect the polarity of this correctly. In this case, I am going to use the transformer connected to terminal PO1 to measure the consumption of the home. I attach it to the phase entry wire of the general thermal magnet of the home circuits. We must direct the arrow that the transformer has drawn towards the consumption and we will connect transformer 2 on the line that goes towards the inverters with the arrow in the direction towards them. We give it power, reset the circuit. We download the Shelly Smart Control application and create a free user account and once we have the application open, we are going to add the device. To do this, it is necessary that we have the location activated as well as all the permissions you ask us for. We select the option to add via Wi-Fi. And we tell him the network we want to connect him to. It will ask you for its password to access these devices only works with 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi networks. Once it has been added, it will ask us for a name for the device and a room to which we want to assign it. We will create a room that we will call, for example, home. If for some reason the device cannot be located or we have made a mistake when entering the Wi-Fi password, we can reset the device by holding down the button on the back for at least 10 seconds. Once we have the room created, we select it to add the device to it. This one will appear duplicated to us because it is two energy meters. 
which we can name independently. For example, if we have connected intensity transformer 1 to the home consumption, logically we are going to name this as home consumption and transformer 2. As we have it measuring the production of the inverter or inverters, we can call it solar production. Depending on the position of the transformer arrow when installing it, they will give us positive or negative values. The power button that appears on them is used to manually activate the auxiliary contact, which in my case I use to open the building door as I have done on other occasions with other devices. Take a look at the links that will appear in this video to learn more about that topic. Next we are going to connect Shelly's smart plug to our thermos. In the same way we have done previously with the energy meter, we are going to add the smart plug to our application. We're going to call it a thermos and we're going to add it. Also in the same room the plug will appear in the application with its own manual activation button. This plug is capable of measuring power in real time and recording all consumption data that passes through it, independent of the energy measurement record of the Shell EM. With the voltage regulator that I installed previously in this thermos, I can reduce the heating power and thus obtain greater use of solar surpluses. It is now time to create two scenes to activate and deactivate the thermos depending on the solar production. We enter the scene section and add, first I am going to make a scene for turning on the thermos. which we are going to use in the same room will be a device based scene and we are going to select the solar production measurement. We will be based on the power measurement as the thermos I have it regulated at about 300 watts. I am going to tell you to take a reference with a production greater than 400 watts or what it is in this case when the power is less than minus 400 watts depending on the position in which you have installed the measuring clamp of the inverters you will be able to work on positive or negative values. Next I will tell you what you should do when that condition is met. We want to act on a device that we have in the house room with the name thermo. And we want you to turn it on. We delay the action so that it is not immediate and we choose the operating period. The normal thing is that it is in use all week and we already have the scene so that the thermos does not turn on and we create in the same way. A second scene for turning off the thermos. But this time we work on housing consumption. I'm going to tell you in this case that the condition is 700 watts. We must take into account that we must set a value higher than what the thermos consumes. And I am also going to set the condition that when the solar production is less than 350 watts, doing so, the two conditions must be met to pay for the thermos. We could also add an independent condition of low production, adding a condition that is not related to this and we tell him to turn off the thermal device. When these conditions are met, each of the scenes must be configured to perform them repeatedly. After checking the scene, I could see that it repeatedly turned the thermos on and off and the problem was in the second off condition, which I mistakenly told it was when it was less than 350 watts, and once the scenes are done correctly. It can be verified that by removing the solar production the plug will turn off the thermos when the delay time that we have told it has elapsed and when the solar production returns it will activate it again. Another way to do it, perhaps simpler and more efficient from my point of view, would be to use the transformer with which we measure the consumption of the home to measure the input and output balance. To do this we would have to connect the home bypass. With this we will have the value of the power that goes positive or a negative value when it is being poured into the grid, thus doing so to the transformer. One I am going to give it the name balance. And the optimal scene settings for my case would be the following. You must keep in mind that my thermos is regulated at 300 watts only in the normal case that the thermos works 100%.
Since setting values would increase proportionally, just like if you have a higher capacity solar installation. In my case, it would be when I have solar production greater than 400 watts and the balance is less than zero. That is, I am not taking energy from the grid. It will be when I activate the thermos. And I'll turn it off when I'm taking more than a watt from the grid. If you want to turn the thermos on or off manually, you should disable the scenes by clicking the on and off button for each of them. Because if you don't, if you manually activate the thermos and there is no solar production, the scene will turn it off for you with this system. I make sure that domestic water heating will always be with solar surpluses. Don't forget to leave your comment or question in the comment section and as always, like it, give it to super. Thank you, subscribe to the channel and see you in the next video.